All right, in it two, a free response question one. This is the one from CalcMedic. We're given a graph of F, and um, on the left side of the graph, we know that um, it's just made up of line segments. And then the right side of the graph from zero to two pi is made up by the curve y equals sine of two sine of x. And the first question is, what is the average rate of change of F on the interval from negative 7 to negative 1. So the average rate of change, they're just asking us to find the slope. So we're, we're going to be going from the point negative 7 to the point negative 1. So this is the slope we're looking for. Now, um, they're, they're going to want to see some work. We can't just like look at that slope and tell the answer and get full credit. Um, so we would need to make sure that we made it look like calculus by using um, the average rate of change formula, which is basically the slope formula. So in the numerator, we're going to take f of negative 1 and subtract f of negative 7 from it. And then denominator, we would subtract negative 1 minus negative 7. All right, and then we can get f of negative 1 from our graph, f of negative 1 is at 1, right? f of negative 7 is at negative 1. All right, and then that denominator is just going to be a 6. So we end up with 2 sixths or 1 third. All right, that's not too terrible. Let's look at the next one. The next one um, is kind of a tricky question, and we spent some time talking about this, but it's been a long time. Um, but they're asking you to find a limit, and this is a very special limit. Um, this is what we used to call derivatives in disguise. So when you see that limit that looks like that, um, if, if you see this on the test, and I, I just have a sneaky suspicion you will, um, usually they do several multiple choice questions involved in this. Since we don't have any of those this year, I think you, you might see this. Um, but that is just another way of writing f prime of zero. That is the limit, one of the limit definitions of the derivative. And so if we look at a graph, we can see that at, when, when x is zero, the function is not differentiable because you have that sharp turn. And I've, I saw a question like you're gonna do another one where there's two of these that you're evaluating and um, the first one, you know, they use it, the derivative to find it. And then the second one is, is kind of the situation where you explain that um, the function is not differentiable at that point. But I feel like, um, on this one, since it's just asking you to do one thing, they're going to want to see, like, official um, verification, the reason why the derivative um, doesn't exist at that point. So, the reason why is that the limit, as x approaches 0 from the left of this expression... Is just going to be the slope on, of the line on the left side of zero. So we're looking at the slope of this line right here, which is negative one. All right, and then the limit as x approaches zero from the right of this expression. just means the derivative of that right side function and the right side function is 2 sine of x. And we are going to evaluate that when x is 0. Okay, so the derivative of 2 sine of x is 2 cosine of x, and then we want to plug in 0 for x, right? 
because sine of zero is one, so that limit is two. All right, so then you would need to make a note, a statement that um, the limit as x approaches zero of that expression, f of x minus f of zero over x minus zero does not exist because the limit as x approaches zero from the left of the expression does not equal the limit as x approaches zero from the right. So um, this is the answer, the way the calcumetic people gave the answer, which I, I feel pretty confident in them, um, even though they did make a mistake on this problem. Overall, they seem like they really know what they're doing. Um, but know that it is possible that you could get credit for writing something like, does not the limit this does not exist because f is not differentiable at x equals zero. Um, but if it's just asking you to find one of the things, just one limit, they're probably going to want you to do more than just make that statement. They're going to want to see all of this. And I'm sorry, it is kind of a guessing game, and they have changed the test, and so no one right now really knows what to expect. So um, you can always show them more than what they need. Okay, let's look at C. Um, we have a new function, which is h of x, and it's defined as f of x times the cosine of x. We want to find h prime of negative pi. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is find h prime of x. And to do that, we're going to use the product rule. And so, um, the order you do, the which one you take the derivative of and which one you leave alone, doesn't matter because it's multiplication and addition. So, I'm just going to leave the first one alone multiply by the derivative of the second and then plus leave and then um, leave the second one alone and multiply by the derivative of the first all right and the the calcmatic people didn't assign points to this but usually this will get you a point just writing that all right then we would need to plug in the negative pi. So f of negative pi, we're not going to be able to tell exactly what that is, but in the end, it's not going to really matter. But negative pi is just a little bit smaller than negative 3. So it's this point right here. So I'm going to say that's about 2.8-ish. Um, it honestly doesn't matter in a second. All right, and then the negative sine of pi. If you guys remember, sine is an odd function, and so the negative sine of pi is the exact same thing as the positive sine. I said that wrong. The negative sine of negative pi is the same thing as the positive sine of positive pi, and the positive sine of positive pi is zero. And then cosine is an even function. And so for even functions, if we have the cosine of a negative, it's the same thing as the cosine of the positive. So odd functions, you change the sign in the front. Even functions, you just drop off the negative and you're done. So the cosine of zero is negative one. All right, and then f prime of negative pi. So we go back to this negative pi point which is a little bit less than negative three. And um, F prime is gonna be the slope of that line segment. 
and it looks like the slope of that line segment is 1. then h prime of negative pi is going to be negative 1. Okay, and then one more that's kind of similar to that, but instead we're going to be using the quotient rule. Alright, so what do we find? We're finding, we have a new function, g, this is a quotient, and we're going to find g prime of pi. So first we'll find g prime of x. So we'll do low d high minus high d low over low squared. Then we'll go back and put in pi. Okay, so equals oh, we need a power right here okay because then our power we just found on the last problem was negative one all right and then two f prime Now, um, on the last problem, we did figure out that um, the derivative of this right side of the graph, which is what we're using on this one because we're talking about what's going on in pi, um, the derivative of that was cosine of x, 2 cosine of x. So we're needing to know... So we're doing f prime of pi. We need to know what the 2 cosine of pi is. And that's just going to be. Negative 2. Alright. And then. For f of pi, we'll go to the graph, and then this right here is um, when x is pi, so that's going to be 0. And then negative sine of pi is also 0, which doesn't matter. And then cosine of pi is negative 1. So it looks like negative 1 times 2 times negative 2 is 4, and then minus 0 divided by 1 is 4. So this is another one where 